Small form factor systems have plenty of benefits. They take up less space on your desk, are more discreet, and of course are more compact, which makes them easier to do things like this. Also, there's just something really cool about cramming a whole lot of power into something the size of a shoebox. Most of the time, you don't need more than a single GPU, two RAM DIMMs, and an ITX motherboard anyway. I mean, when we think about high-end gaming PCs, our minds are usually drawn to larger ATX cases with the components to match. One of the biggest arguments for utilizing a larger PC case is that there's just way more airflow, and this results in a cooler system. And of course, all things being equal, including fan curves, if your system is running cooler, then it should also be running quieter as well. Now, I actually wanted to test this. What would happen if I took all of the components from my main mini ITX build in the tiny N-Case M1 and moved them to a popular ATX chassis such as the NZXT S340 Elite? I mean, how much cooler and quieter are we actually talking if we're comparing one case that's a mere 13.5 liters to one that's 41.5 liters and over three times the size. The S340 Elite isn't even a large ATX sized case as it is a mid tower after all, but it absolutely towers over the N case M1. Personally, this is what drew me to small form factor cases in the first place, as they are just completely optimized for performance per liter. But of course, I do have to wonder how much better the cooling and acoustics would be if I moved to a larger volume. One common idea is that there's just way more room for air to be circulated and pushed through throughout the case. And this results in cooler ambient temperatures inside the case, whereas more compact systems such as the N-Case M1 have very little space between components to move the air. And this results in just hot air circulating around the system. Now, another argument of course for a bigger chassis is that you can populate the system with more case fans. So we're also going to throw in a third test today with two extra case fans to see just how much that really helps with the cooling. Now, let's quickly brush over the components for those of you who aren't familiar with this build. These components don't run cool by any means. We've got the GTX 1070 Founders Edition, an i7 7700K, which will be running at 4.8 gigahertz, the Noctua D9L CPU cooler fitted with two 92 millimeter Redux fans, a Z170 Stinger motherboard, and lastly, 16 gigabytes of DDR4 memory clocked at 2666 megahertz. As I mentioned previously, small form factor cases are usually pretty minimal when it comes to case fan options and usually rely on passively exhausting the hot air in the system through ventilated side panels. I've got two 120mm fans in the bottom here set up as intakes and it'll be interesting to see just how much this affects GPU temperatures compared to the S340 Elite where the fans are located somewhere else. Speaking of which, I'll be using the exact same fans, the Corsair SP120s, but setting them up a little bit differently, using one fan in the front here as an intake, and using the other one as an exhaust at the top. And also, the fans on the CPU cooler are fitted in a way to bring the air in from the rear, but don't worry because I did test an exhaust configuration as well, and we got some pretty interesting results. Now, we'll be simulating both a CPU heavy workload and a GPU heavy workload, and then both at the same time, which we'll call the torture workload, and this will be IDA64 and Unigen Heaven 4.0 respectively. Ambient temperatures were very closely monitored as we could only be talking about a couple of degree difference here. So let's first compare identical systems in each case. Starting off with idle temperatures, there's not a huge difference at all, but the S340 Elite is about one and a half degrees cooler. By the way guys, all of the data that you're seeing here has been adjusted to fit an ambient room temperature of 20 degrees C. Moving on to the CPU load testing, and here the S340 Elite is around 4 degrees cooler for the CPU, but 2 degrees warmer for the GPU. Now, this may sound odd at first, but we do have to remember where our intake fans are in both systems. The N-Case M1 has them directly below the GPU, whereas the S340 Elite has one intake in the front, and more importantly, one right above the CPU cooler. That's why we're getting GPU improvements on the M1 side, but CPU improvements in the S340 Elite. In the gaming simulated task, the N-Case M1 actually did better than the much bigger S340 Elite for the same reason. I also believe that the ventilated side panels are really helping the M1 passively exhaust the GPU heat, which results in cooler CPU temperatures, compared to the S340 Elite, which sort of traps the heat with the tempered glass side panel, resulting in a three degree increase for the CPU. Now for the torture simulation. Here we're running both IDA64 and Unigen Heaven 4.0, and here we get a bit of a combination from the previous two results. The mid tower has better CPU temperatures with this fan configuration, but again, the M1 beats it in terms of GPU temps. 
Now, after these tests, I just had more questions and testing that I wanted to complete. For example, what would happen if we added more case fans to the S340 Elite? And also what would happen to the airflow and results if we change the CPU fans from a rear intake to a rear exhaust? So the new configurations that we'll be testing in the S340 Elite are two 120mm intake fans in the front, the top still configured as exhaust, and then the rear fan either configured as intake or exhaust, depending on whether the CPU fans are intake or exhaust. So at idle, we see that stepping it up to four case fans in the mid tower S340 Elite does improve idle temperatures by a few degrees. And the results are fairly similar when the CPU fans are either configured to intake or flip to exhaust. Back to the CPU load test and the four fans in the S340 Elite with the CPU fans configured to exhaust result in the lowest temperatures. And at this point, we're about five degrees cooler than the NCase M1. And for the gaming load temperatures, we really get a bit of a mixed bag, but let's break it down. The GPU temperatures seem to improve generally with the increase in case fans in the system, and the CPU temps seem to do a little bit better with an exhaust configuration. This is because when the CPU cooler is configured as a rear intake fan, it's not taking in fresh air, but instead the hot air that's being exhausted from the GPU. So essentially here, we're just recycling the hot air from the GPU with this fan configuration. However, the results do depend on the rest of the system. As we can see here with the torture load simulation, the NCase M1 does do better with the CPU cooler configured as a rear intake, since it doesn't have front intakes like the S340 Elite. Instead, when it's configured as an exhaust fan, it's only getting the warm air from the GPU, which doesn't effectively dissipate the heat from the CPU cooler. GPU temperatures don't seem to change much at all though, and I'm really surprised that the NCase M1 could actually pull enough air from underneath to cool effectively. Now, I know you guys are really interested in how the system sounded like at full load, so here's a quick sound test for the NCase M1 and both the S340 Elite configured for two fans and four fans. And do keep in mind that this was both with Ida64 and Heaven.0 running at full blast, so pretty much all the fans were running at 100%. So the S340 Elite definitely has some better sound insulation than the NCase M1, and that's definitely something to consider if you want a quieter system. Adding the extra fans to the S340 Elite though did result in a slightly louder system and pretty much matched the NCase M1 with two fans. So bringing all of the results together, it seems that if we keep the identical system and just swap the case, the S340 Elite does provide some better airflow options surrounding the CPU cooler, compared to the NCase M1, and this does result in better temperatures in heavy CPU load scenarios, but worse temperatures in GPU heavy scenarios until you add more fans. When comparing the four fans in the S340 Elite to the two bottom intakes in the M1, CPU temps were over seven degrees cooler for the CPU and three degrees cooler for the GPU in the gaming load scenario. For the torture test, the S340 Elite was again about six degrees cooler on the CPU side, but the M1 does match it in terms of GPU temps thanks to those bottom intake fans. So, are bigger cases better? Well, it's safe to say that they definitely can be if you populate them with enough fans, but simply switching to a bigger case did not provide a significant improvement over the smaller one when testing gaming and the torture load scenario. And of course, this test isn't even touching on the fact that with bigger cases, you can utilize even more effective CPU cooling options, such as a liquid all-in-one cooler, and of course, larger tower air coolers, which will improve temperatures even further. So guys, hope you enjoyed this fun little video. Don't forget to hit that like button if you enjoyed, and as always, I will see you all in the next one.